Hello, hello, hello. Turn that fan down just a bit. Hello, everybody. Give you all a few minutes to join in. We are going to go chapter 7, Eager Anticipation. Expectation. Hello. Okay. I'm blaming Karen. Hello, Rebecca. Hello. Who else we got? Anyone else? Now, while we're waiting for people, come on. Do me a favor. Go on my personal timeline today and share that Unlocking the Mystery is 99 cents until, I think, the third. And share that on your timeline so other people will know. Um... Hello, Joshua. How are you? How's the sound? Is the picture good? Give me some news. So tomorrow we got two bros plus Jesus. And exciting things are happening. Y'all check out the YouTube channel and I have opened up now after I do this teaching I have been putting it on the YouTube channel so everyone has access to it. Confident expectation. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Now, if the heart is sick, the body's sick. So, that is confident expectation put off makes the heart sick. But desire comes, it is the tree of life. So, hello everybody that just came on. This is chapter 7. Now, we talked about ri righteousness. It's His righteousness. We talked about believing or belief or what we believe. And when we know it's by His righteousness that we have all things of God's kingdom. Then we quit looking at ourselves. We quit trying to get it by self-effort. By trying to earn. Which that work-mindedness is so easy of a trap for us to fall into. And if we think we earn anything... When it comes to the kingdom of God, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. The heavenly Father, through Christ, has made everything abundant. He is not a stingy father. He wants his children blessed. He wants his children healthy. But so often times it's the traditions of men to where we have to work. We have to do this or do that in order to have it. That's where it is important to understand. I'm his righteousness. Which means since the Holy Spirit dwells in me, I am righteous in spite of my actions the more I come to understand this, 
then the less I try to work and the more the Holy Spirit works through us instead of us trying to work it out on our own. We are taught from when we are babies, we are taught self-effort, self-effort. You have to work to be successful, etc., etc. Jesus did the work for us. And when we lay down the standard that we have to meet it, that's when we start meeting it. That is when the change starts happening, when we're relying on the Holy Spirit, not on ourselves. So believe, believing is simply taking something as an unquestionable fact. With healing, it is an unquestionable fact that it is by His stripes because as we talked about in Isaiah 53, 5, well really 53 all the way through from 3 to 5, it talks about how he bore our iniquities, how the chastisement, the punishment for our peace was upon him. All of these things he bore for us. So we take that as an unquestionable fact. It's his righteousness is how we have, and I'm trying to remember that word I hate that everybody uses so often. Can't remember it off the top of my head. Um, Hello, Amy Dean. Suzanne, hello, Jean. And in Jesus' name right now, I just ask the Holy Spirit right now to take away all of that. Not manifest. Oh, I hate that word. hi yay yay yish because in using the word manifest, we're waiting for our healing to manifest. So now we've got a question mark. When is it going to manifest? Get rid of all the question marks. And in Jesus' name for Jennifer, I speak Holy Spirit amnesia and that the thought of smoking is just wiped out. Thank you, Jesus. And a little suggestion there. See yourself as a non-smoker. You're not trying to quit smoking. You, you are, I'm trying to think of a better way to phrase that instead of non-smoker um, <laughs> you are free in Jesus name you are free thank you Jesus so you've got believing what's the belief that we are already healed by his stripes now we have the expectation, eager anticipation, the ex confident expectation for right now, the present time that we are in, that we are healed. Now, when I say this, the mindset is there has to be improvement, period. No question mark. We're not looking to see if there's improvement. We are not looking for confirmation from our bodies that the symptoms are gone. Okay? 
and listen to my words and it sounds like a word game but it's not this is a heart change from being in lack from striving to be healed to having our heal healing and so is expectation now when you think about that word expectation because that is what hope is hope is not wishful thinking we use it like wishful thinking the number of times I've heard somebody says well I hope he does heal me there's always that question mark get rid of the question marks entitlement that's the word I was looking for is because of Christ we are entitled to our healing it is ours so therefore we don't have to strive to get it it should come through God's rest in us And so now we are confident in the fact that there is improvement. We're no lo longer striving to see if or we're no longer striving for the confirmation. We already have the confirmation in here. Without looking here to say Oh, I feel pain. I'm not healed. No. I like the word entitlement better because we are entitled by His righteousness. Because too many people use the word legal, such as the enemy has legal rights. Guess what? The enemy has no rights because I am God's. I am a children of God, therefore he has got no rights and it is not based upon my action, period. That is where the expectation comes in. Oh, don't get your hopes up. No, get your hopes up, but let it come from within. Let it not just be an emotion. We get into trouble when we rely on our emotions. Our emotions can be helpful at times, such as um, when I woke up one morning after the original healing. It had been two or three weeks and I was paralyzed again and everything else I felt righteous anger and it was hell these were my thoughts because I couldn't talk again couldn't move I was, and it was hell no I'm healed and then I said Jesus and that quickly it went away so there are times when emotions can help. But if you rely only on emotions, hey, you can only stay emotionally excited or emotionally encouraged for so long. And so it is important not to rely on emotions you rely on this the Holy Spirit's in me therefore he is giving life to my body so there has to be improvement which is why I did that YouTube video a healing soothing prayer so that when you come upon difficult days you can picture the Holy Spirit as water inside of you cleaning you out he's going from your toes 
up your legs, up your quadriceps, up your tummy. Out of the belly shall flow rivers of living water. He is going from your belly up out of your mouth to where you are declaring that you're healed, where you are declaring praise to the Father, and then it's going back down to your toes, and it's in a circle, which is completion. And you get that image in your head. But to rely purely on emotions, your emotions will mislead you. And you can only keep up a certain emotional state, such as being encouraged emotionally, for so long. Whereas you can make the choice, you can make the decision to stand by the fact, I am healed, therefore there has to be improvement. There is no looking for confirmation because now you're relying on the confirmation from the Holy Spirit it is always yes and amen. So your expectation stays in the present tense now. That things change now. That's why, like this weekend, we had the church conference. And that's... that's even when I pray for, for people in church, I don't do it the standard way most time. You know, mostly, I'm not sitting there and saying anything long and saying some pretty little prayer. That's why a lot of times I take my sledgehammer in. Here, lift this up now so that the person can see they're healed. And I'm not looking, I'm not handing them the sledgehammer to see if, because I already know they're healed. Now, I tell them, pick up the sledgehammer. Shoop. And then when they do it, then that increases your expectation. And so... There's a time, like I said, in some of my healings, emotions such as righteous anger has played a part. And when that comes from the inside out, from the Holy Spirit outward, that's fine. If it's something I'm planning out and try to work up to it, then that does not always work out for the better. Because now I'm doing it, I'm striving to get it, I'm striving to feel that emotion, I'm striving to work it up. And that won't always turn out right. But when it comes from inside outwardly, it works out every time because now there's no doubt, now there's no fear. Oftentimes, if we're trying to work something up, then we're trying we're trying to um, we're trying to convince ourselves instead of being convinced. We're trying to make it an unquestionable fact instead of it is an unquestionable fact. And so then we start questioning it without even realizing it. Everything works inwardly, outwardly, from the inside, from where the Holy Spirit is in our spirit outwardly. And so the anticipation is a crucial thing, but don't get that confused that there has to be an emotion attached to it. There doesn't have to be. It is when deep down I know there's only one end result 
and I take that without question. And that is when we are in God's rest. We know it's already done. And a lot of times it's not even a conscious thought because it's coming inwardly to the outside. It's coming from our spirit to. And that's this is a powerful thing because there are many cases, in fact, in our church, um, we've got we've got a few cases of where the person in fact one, one of our people uh he's he's a musician he had no eardrum no none of that he was completely deaf in one ear and after prayer and this was years ago long before i told the, uh, before I was a part of the church. This happened long before I started attending. Um, but he had prayer one night. He could hear. He could hear out that ear perfectly. But guess what? There, his eardrum is still missing. He has no eardrum, but yet can still hear. And then there was... Um, Back in the, I want to say, 70s or 80s, a fellow named Robert Coyne, I think that's his name, um, he, he was completely missing an eye. And he had a glass eye. Now, after prayer... One day, when when he was young, he could see out of that eye, but there was no eyeball that grew back. So to think that that part has to grow back for you, this is a spiritual matter. The spiritual matter is the true reality. So. We don't need the physical thing in order to be able to function. God is such more powerful than that. If, if these people were waiting for the evidence of an eyeball to appear, then it would have never happened. And he would prove. He would take his glass eye out have this eye all bounded up. I've watched the video on it. And he could read. And he could read better than he could with his real eye. And that's just like this fella on our worship team. He can hear better out of the ear that has no eardrum than he, than he can out of the, the other ear. And so if you're looking to your body for confirmation... And once again, this is a mindset. If I'm looking to see if, if I'm looking for the confirmation, that's not what it takes. But it is, it is the anticipation, the expectation, I'm healed, therefore there has to be improvement, that busts through the physical senses and that proves that healing is a spiritual thing and actually I saw a leg grow back fella that I prayed for and this was quite a few years ago at first you could not see the leg at at first but he was walking and it, it was <laughs> but you couldn't see it he had lifted up his pant leg 
Yeah, I didn't see it, but he was walking normally. Then he dropped his pant leg, lifted it up again, and then you saw his leg. So you don't rely on what you see. And that is where deep expectation, whether you have the emotions that go along with it, is so important. In Jesus' name right now, restoration hearing. Thank you, Jesus. And there you just have a huge testimony on that. Anyhow, um, a few weeks ago, when me and the pastor both prayed over this fella with a huge tumor, it turned out he was also, also deaf in one ear. And bam, his hearing was restored that quick. And here, the music was going. And this, this is what I loved. The music was going. I made sure he could not see my mouth. And I was speaking in a whisper with music going. And he repeated back to me what I said. And I think what I said was, I love my sledgehammer or something that you, that you wouldn't suspect. And so is keeping your expectation built up into the present tense. It is always now. There has to be a change because the Holy Spirit is inside of you. And so just, um, I really encourage people to listen to the soothing healing prayer so you can get that image in your mind of the Holy Spirit being in you and just washing any infirmity out. Um, because when we are in expectation, think about this. When we're in true expectation, we are using our imagination. If I am expecting to purchase a vehicle then my imagination is working without even being aware of it. I am picking out what the car will look like, probably what color it will be, etc., etc. So I already have a picture in my mind of what car it is that I'm going to get. Now that picture may change, but expectation true expectation comes with images it comes with the imagination attached to it um, it comes with thinking speaking in the present tense it comes with all of those things and so it is constantly changing the mindset to it's a now thing with no question marks because when our hope is in the Lord we are not ashamed so if we are in expectation if we're in true expectation there is no such thing God does not put off our expectation we put it off I hear people say all the time, well, I keep, I keep hoping and nothing happens. And they're blaming God. Well, instead, it's our expectation because what, how are we viewing our healing? Are we viewing our healing in terms of someday? Are we viewing our healing in terms of, well, maybe tomorrow? I feel the same today as I did yesterday, so maybe tomorrow I'll be healed. That's putting it off. And that is also, we're basing it off of, we are looking for the confirmation. So, 
So, let's see here. I don't even think. <laughs> have I even really gotten into the teaching? I don't know. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope, expect in his mercy. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that expect in the Lord. And hope, expectation, maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. So many times, and look, look at this verse. I do love this verse, and it's Romans 5.5. 5. The first part of it is, And hope, expectation, maketh not ashamed. What's the second part? Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So, what does that mean then? That means our love confirms. It's simply what that means. We will never be ashamed because we know the Heavenly Father loves us Therefore, he will provide for us now. Did you all get that? Since the Father loves us, he has already provided for us. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. He loves us, therefore we are healed. What parent would deny anything that they have the power to give their child? So hopefully y'all get that. Is his love for us Therefore, he will not deny us anything. Um, ooh, can I remember where that's at? Romans. Do, 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 do. Romans 8, something, something. Hold on, let me get this scripture. Do, 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 do. Here we go. All right. Yes, Romans 8, 32. If he did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, why will he not freely give us all things with him? Hello? Freely give us. Because everything is based upon Christ's righteousness. His love for us. Therefore we have it already. Be convinced. Quit trying to get convinced. That's where you come to him as a little child. A little child unless that child's tainted, a little child believes what you tell them and accepts it. How many, how many little children, five and six years old, believe in a Santa Claus because his mother and father to told him about Santa Claus? Okay? Um, they believe it and they don't question it. That's why we know our Heavenly Father loves us. We have the, cr the cross as proof. We have Jesus as an unquestionable fact. Therefore, we take him at his word. The Holy Spirit is in us. Therefore, 
Oh, I wish I had my sledgehammer, Diane. In Jesus' name, right now, I speak a comfortable body, a complete body. Thank you, Jesus. So with all of these things combined, all of that overcomes the physical reality and the spiritual truth shines through each and every time. Okay. And the expectation is kind of like the javelin that just punches through, or better yet, a jackhammer that just punches through. Because now, forgive me, Diane, for this. Maybe. Um, I'm not looking for my body to cooperate. My body has no choice. And that's the way I view it. My body has no choice. The Holy Spirit's in me. It's got no choice. And that's my mindset once again. And so when we get this solid and we make the choice and we stick with the choice, then my, my body has no say about it whatsoever. The Holy Spirit's in me. So therefore, there is no choice. In Jesus' name, I speak open hearts and let this word sink in to the heart. Thank you, Jesus. And sometimes it's taking a sledgehammer to those tapes in your mind to where they see you as mere mortals. Quit thinking of yourself as a mere mortal. You are a supernatural spiritual being. You are a son, a daughter of the living God. The physical circumstances cannot control you. And in Jesus' name, just a good old laugh. I'm going to laugh with you. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I speak comfort to your body. You're fine, Diane. I trust me. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. And Jesus name right now I just speak a warming sensation flooding your body, Diane. Right now. Thank you, Jesus. We are supernatural spiritual beings, yes. Toss, you know, every time somebody says, well, you're only human, I don't care where I'm at or who said it, I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm a son of God. Now, all of this, yes, you've got, you've got to renew your mind to that truth. And, as I used to say all the time, get over it. When you come to look at yourself as a supernatural being, and when you come and you almost, it's not really a resentment that will cause bitterness, but when somebody calls you, oh, but you're only human, no, I ain't. There's many people at church that can testify to the fact they call me a mere... Uh, 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 oh, you're only human, Tony? Oh, my golly. I'll take a sledgehammer, big old CJ. Uh-uh. That ain't me. I am not a mere mortal. 
I am a son of God. I have his DNA in my body. And you think about these things. And see, that's what meditating is. Is you keep thinking it. You find a scripture. You use your expectation, which creates images. And you picture yourself as being a son of God. In Christ, we're higher than the angels. On this side of the cross, we are higher than the angels. And so, these are the things we need to take the old program, smash them with a sledgehammer, refuse to think the same way about yourself, see yourself the way God sees you as a son, as a daughter, and throw them all tapes away. See yourself as his righteousness. And the more you chew on that, the more convinced you are of that, the more it plays out. And the more your actions show that. Yes, Joshua, I love that. As he is, so are we in this world. <coughs> Quit letting that old tape recorder just play. Stop it. Press stop button. Take tape out. Smash it with the sledgehammer. Nope. I am... A spiritual being. <clears throat> All right. Hello, Diane. Diane Walker, I didn't see you there. Let's see. There's so many good verses. Matthew twelve thirty four, For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You ever want to know what you truly believe? Hear yourself when you're out at lunch with your family and see what you're talking about. See what just flows out of your mouth. And if the words, well, we're only human... Go in the bathroom, take some soap, wash your mouth out. Like my mama used to do with my filthy mouth. Um, let's see if y'all change your mind real quick. Y'all don't do that. Please don't do that. But, you get my point. Is you can self-check what's in your heart. When you're out at the movies. When you're rollerblade and whatever you do what's coming out of your mouth what just flows out because what's what just flows out is a heart belief so then you make the choice you make the decision to bust it up get rid of it throw it away and to think the truth amen <laughs> that'll get me in trouble for sure so anyone else need prayer for Diane Walker in Jesus name I speak life thank you Jesus Okay, let's go over the question. See if somebody can type fast. What is scriptural hope? 
Let's see how long it takes. There's such a delay, I think, on this thing. Because I know half y'all have done rope to answer. In Jesus' name, right now, I speak completely clear eyes. Thank you, Jesus. And if y'all notice, when I speak, when I make declarations, I use the affirmative. Because you don't need to point to the symptom. So, such as this case, such as for Rebecca, right? Cataracts cause your eyes to be foggy, to not be able to see clear and clean. And so, what? So, clear sight. Thank you, Jesus. Now, your focus is on what you are expecting to happen, and it's no longer on the symptom. Confident expectation. Correct, Pam. How quickly should you expect your healing? Oh, thank you, Jesus, for this question. That's question two. And people. People, people, people. Do not think of this, that this has to be a process. Too often, we think this has to be we think we have to have our minds renewed to this point before we see anything. Get rid of that thought. You expect a present tense this second. Okay? Get rid of the thought. You have to reach this level before you see anything. Get rid of the thought it has to be a process. Get rid of it. Beat it up with a sledgehammer. Gosh darned it. So many times it's a process just because we think it has to be. And then we have people that teach. Well, you know, a lot of times it's a process. It's a process because that's where our thoughts are. Because we are slowing down our expectation. We're not putting in the present time. We're up in the present time. We're up maybe day by day will improve a little bit. So then what's going to happen? Day by day, we slowly improve instead of seeing it all now. Get rid of the thought that it has to be a process. Now, by the same time, so you don't get frustrated, yes, when you have a subtle improvement, make a big deal about it. Absolutely. But that's still because like what happened to me, it was a bunch of small improvements real quick, then the big improvements came. That's why a lot of times the serious things are instantaneous because if I wasn't healed from everything at that moment, I was a dead man. So it all had to happen. If we put that same line of thought to these things that aren't necessarily life-threatening, they just inhibit our life, It all has to happen now. Then we will see more of the instantaneous. But with the other things, we tend to think it's a process. Get rid of that line of thought. All right. Get excited about the subtle improvements. And don't call them little. Magnify them. Call them huge. So therefore, 
this happened so everything else I can see right now exactly all right who is responsible for sick heart and what are the end results of hope deferred I should put what is responsible for sick heart okay and right now for Linda yes in Jesus name I speak comfortable feet how's that Linda I speak strong legs smooth gait comfortable feet thank you Jesus yes in fact, I was trying to die. Um, who is that? Diane. Um, yeah. Every every day could have been my last day. I I I couldn't eat. I hadn't. I had no substance for six months period my my stomach had completely stopped I could have died at any time I was expecting death I wanted death I was tired of suffering I was tired of seeing my wife try to take care of me but and once again I'm the example of what not to do in that first healing that I had so um, but yes but once again that just shows I did everything wrong and was still healed so it only takes that half a second of clarity just like that okay I am telling you this that is why you know that's why if you haven't read the Lord Jesus healed me it's so important to read that so y'all know I mean there were so many things wrong with me and I could have died at any time in fact there were many times I just completely stopped breathing and my my wife had it put that stupid thing on me so you know I could have died at any time but the Lord was sustaining me through it hello Darlene so you know I am truly speaking from experience and that is why even though sometimes it may be a process it does not have to be a lot of times we make it into a process because that's unknowingly that's what we're expecting nothing was working on me more or less they go I couldn't swallow they were only putting drops of liquid in my mouth and my stomach was completely paralyzed there was nothing going to my kidneys <laughs> my stomach was breaking nothing now um, so and like I said earlier if y'all would share um, go to my my timeline that's got that little picture of the sale of unlocking and share that on your timeline I would appreciate that and 
Amen. And thank you, Diane. Um, and so... Yes, absolutely, Joshua. You don't have to get enough faith points in your righteousness. Bank first. Jesus paid the full price. It is available now. It is by his righteousness. He has provided us with all things. We have the faith because we have the spirit of faith. So we are not lacking in anything. A lot of times, the only Thing that is lacking is just what are we expecting in? Where is our expectation at? Because we're not lacking faith. We have the spirit of faith in us. That faith comes alive through our belief and our expectation but we already have the faith. I have never told any person they lack faith because they don't. And I'll take that to the bank. Um, anyone else need prayers, got comments, whatever? Tomorrow, two bros plus Jesus. Um... And right now, uh, I'm going to save it. I got some exciting news, but I don't know whether to share it or not yet. Um, but the Lord is showing me more and more about this, about my testimony actually being put into... They show a movie or something and it, it appears the Lord's making this happen. I will put it like that. You know, so. Anyhow, that's all I got for tonight. Well, let, let me just say, after the 4th, sometime after the 4th, I'll be meeting with some people, and we'll see. And so, and so, we'll, but in my heart, I feel this is going to happen sooner rather than later. Strength in your legs in Jesus name Suzanne thank you Jesus thank you Jesus life 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 all right y'all I love each and every one of you yeah the Sid Ross show I, I sent him my material like two years ago and you know, whatever. No, it ain't about Sid Ross show. It's about a testimonial movie. All right. Xenia, right now, in Jesus' name, I speak comfort in your heels comfort and life thank you Jesus I just heard blood flow Xenia I don't know if that makes any sense but let there be blood flow thank you Jesus so 
God bless each and every one of you. Be blessed. Be healed. And be a blessing.